Hello dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Satnam Kaur, Assistant Professor, Khalsa College of Education, Ranjit Avenue, Amritsar. Today, we'll discuss about the topic, Educational Administration, Structure, Functions and Processes at District and Sub-District level. After discussing this topic, you will be able to explain the meaning of the term educational administration, describe the structure of educational administration at the district and sub-district level, understand the functions of various educational administrative agencies at the district and sub-district level, elucidate the processes involved in efficient educational administration at the district and sub-district level. Now we'll start with the meaning of educational administration. The concept of educational administration is applicable in case of an educational organization which has certain purposes or goals to fulfill. Educational administration means the capacity of an individual or organization to manage all the activities of that organizational institute. It is also defined as the activity of a government or state in the exercise of its powers and duties. It is concerned with formulating general plans and policies for education. It is a discipline within the study of education that examines the administrative theory and practice of education in general and educational institutions and educators in particular. Therefore, educational administration is regarded as the process of integrating the appropriate human and material resources that are made available and made effective for achieving of an educational program. Let's try to understand the nature of educational administration. Educational administration doesn't refer to any single process, rather different processes or aspects which constitute administration. Educational administration is a non-profit making task. Educational administration is primarily a social enterprise as it is more concerned with human resources than with material resources. Educational administration is more an art than a science. The reason is that human relationships prevailed here cannot be maintained by any set of formulae. Educational administration is similar to general administration in many ways, but it is also dissimilar to general administration in many more ways. Educational administration is a complex affair. Dear students, let's have a look on the objectives of educational administration. As we know, the very fact that educational administration needs integration and coordination of all the physical and human resources and educational elements. Besides this, it requires a great efficiency as it is based on human sympathy, understanding, knowledge and skill. The physical resources mainly contribute building equipments and instructional materials, whereas the human resources include pupils, teachers, supervisors, administrators and parents. The additional elements comprise the various aspects of educational theory and practice including philosophy of education, objectives of education, curriculum, method of teaching, discipline, role of the teacher, rules and regulations, etc. These elements are parts made into whole and our components brought into harmonious relationship. So, the purpose of doing such vital task is to fulfill different purposes which are known as the objectives of educational administration and these are to provide proper education to students, 
to ensure adequate utilization of all resources, to ensure professional ethics and professional development among teachers, to organize educational programs for acquainting students with the art of democratic living and giving them excellent training in democratic citizenship, to mobilize the community, to organize co-curricular activities effectively for developing talents of students and work efficiency of teachers to get the work done effectively, efficiently and with satisfaction to the individuals and benefits to the society, to prepare students for taking their places in various vocations and avenues of life, to train the students in developing scientific attitude and objective out outlook among them towards all aspects and activities of life, to ensure qualitative improvement of education. There are some basic functions of educational administration as shown in the figure and these are planning, organizing, directing, coordinating, supervising, controlling and evaluating. In the field of educational administration, the educational authority as the administrative authority exercises its functions in relation to the above mentioned aspects. Well, students, now we will talk about the structure of educational administration at district and sub-district level. The structure of educational administration at the district and sub-district level includes the structure both at rural as well as urban level. Every district has panchayat standing committee which includes panchayat representatives of block panchayats which further include members of village panchayat. The district panchayat committee is sub coordinated by the district education officer that is DEO which is further coordinated by the district project coordinator for project management at district level. Each district is divided into small blocks. Block is a group of villages. Each block has its block panchayat standing committee, further coordinated by the block education officer and the project related to education are managed by the block resource center. At the village level, structure of educational administration includes village panchayat sub-coordinated by assistant education officer which further has cluster coordinator to manage projects. At village level, village education committee has mother teacher council. A host of institutional structures between the district level and the schools have been set up in the last one decade to strengthen the schools as well as the curriculum framework namely block resource centers, cluster resource centers, district institute of education and training. Block resource centers and cluster resource centers were established in each block of every district under Sad Shiksha Abhyan to conduct in-service teacher training and to provide academic support to teachers and schools on a regular basis as well as to help in community mobilization activities. Let us have a look on the major academic functions of block resource center and cluster resource centers. Development of the center as a rich academic resource with ample reference materials for the teachers, development of strong human resource pools by inviting resource persons from nearby teacher education institutions, NGOs, colleges, universities and resourceful individuals to form resource groups in different subject areas for primary and upper primary level regular school visits for addressing emerging pedagogic issues and issues related to school development. 
organization of teacher training and monthly meetings to discuss academic issues and design strategies for better school performance. Setting up of performance indicators to track and enhance school performance. Consultation with community members and Panchayati Raj institutions to strive for school improvement. Designing a quality improvement plan for the block cluster as per the SSA goals and strive to achieve that in time bound manner. Monitoring the progress of quality using quality monitoring tools in collaboration with nearby diet. Students, let's have more clarity about the structure, functions and processes at BRC and CRC level. In block, there are several CRCs and each CRC covers a small number of schools within easy reach. BRCs are headed by block resource center coordinators and CRCs by cluster resource center coordinators. The BRC coordinator is academic coordinator facilitator at block level who is responsible for in service training of teachers and providing guidance to the CRC co coordinators. They also organize training programs for members of village education committees and school development and monitoring committees. BRC coordinators also collect material from the district project office for distribution among the teachers, SDMCs, etc. through CRCs and provide continuous support to teachers while monitoring implementation of pedagogical and other interventions at school level. The tasks of CRC coordinators include providing constant support to the teachers, monitoring their performance, identifying their needs both in schools and alternative education centers and licensing with the SDMCs, the community and NGOs working in the area of education. Monthly meetings at cluster level are held and periodic visits to schools are made by CRC coordinators to monitor teachers performance and to provide them on-site support. In nutshell, Role of BRC, CRC is a mixed set of academic, supervisory, managerial, networking and creative activities. It goes beyond routine monitoring and supervision work as it encompasses providing support to schools and teachers through teacher training and teacher mentoring for their professional growth strengthening community school linkage, providing resource support and carrying out action research. Let us have a look on the structure, functions and processes of district institutes of education and training, which are commonly known as DITES. These are considered as a nodal agency at the district level for planning, implementing and monitoring pedagogical activities in the entire district. There are some major functions of diet. It plans short term training programs for teachers of elementary schools of the district after ascertaining the needs of the teachers. It conducts training programs for the teachers, BRC and CRC coordinators and school inspectors. It conducts action research studies and takes up corrective measures. It provides resource support to BRC and CRC coordinators and teachers in schools. It reviews block and cluster level performance of teachers and resource coordinators. It monitors 
pedagogical activities in the district and plan for qualitative interventions at all levels. The diet would therefore support school improvement through overview and coordination of school improvement plan. The diet would supervise the performance of the block and cluster personnel and guide the specific approaches chosen in their district. They would support the BRCC to overcome challenges that come in implementing programs for school improvement in accordance with the chosen approach. Design and delivery of training. Diets would be linked closely to the BRC, CRC so that the design and delivery of training is what the teachers required and need. This requirement can be collaboratively defined by the diet. The BRC training coordination unit, the CRP's expert groups and the teachers. The approach to training needs to change. The teacher needs to explore, reflect on and demand training instead of a one-size-fit-all approach decided solely by the state. The BRCC and CRP can help identify training needs and schedule the sessions along with the master resource persons and other experts. Further, the training sites might be varied. Training can take place at the diet or the block or the cluster or within a school. This will forge stronger links between the diet and the block and also ensure a two-way communication. Database of experts. The diet may become the nodal center that maintains a database of experts available at the district, block or cluster level that can be called on from time to time. Therefore, there's a need for an administrative coordinator at the diet level who will work with the BRC to help coordinate and conduct the trainings at various sites and also network with experts from the field. Development of master resource persons pool. Master resource persons pools need to be nurtured through developing subject expertise, pedagogic ideas and training of trainer related skills. Diets could play a role in strengthening such MRP pools at the district level. Resource center for district. Similar to BRC becoming a knowledge resource center at the block, the diet could contain a wider range of materials for teachers, teacher educators, students, resource persons and resource groups for the whole district. Human management training. Diet could provide training designed for human management professionals. These trainings would be different from those given to teachers and focus on themes like school leadership and teacher motivation. Well, students, till here, we discussed about the educational administration at rural area. In the case of urban areas, the educational administration is taken care of by urban local bodies, either called municipalities or town panchayats, depending on the size of the urban area. In the context of the present discussion, it is relevant to look at the administrative divisions under the following segments in urban areas, and these are Directorate of Elementary Education, Directorate of School Education, and Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. Let's talk about Directorate of Elementary Education. Against the above mentioned background, the administrative setup under the Directorate of Elementary Education in such that all primary and middle schools in district fall under the director of elementary education. There is a chief education officer, CEO, under whom 
two or three district education officers (DEOs) function to control schools that fall under the district. Inspectors who visit schools take care of the teaching learning aspects in the schools that fall under their jurisdiction. Government teachers who hold the direct link between the government and the children convert classroom policy into action. The chief education officer acts as an educational advisor to the municipal commissioner. Some of the important duties of chief education officers are as follows. To have overall control, supervision on various sections and activities of the education department, namely municipal primary schools, secondary schools, training colleges, research section, music and art academy, aided schools section, physical education section, municipal teachers libraries, teaching aid center, school feeding program, vocational guidance section, appointing authority of secondary grade and specialist teachers, counseling chairman for elementary school teachers, appointment and transfer, staff fixation for aided schools, visiting the schools, authority for administrative reasons, granting permission for the appointment of aided school teachers, works as an administrative officer and education officer at district level, sponsoring educational activities and social awareness programs at district level. The district education officer or DEO controls the whole district with regard to education. He manages, guides, hears and redresses the complaints of teachers, other staff and general public. All the duties by teachers and other staff are compliant under the name of district education officer. Each district has three DOs as there are separate DOs for secondary schools and for male female elementary schools. DOs perform wide ranging duties and appear to be the most exhaustively deployed officials in the district. They are required to personally visit each within the district at least once every year. They are also required to regularly meet all head teachers in the district not only to keep themselves abreast of developments in schools but also to motivate and guide head teachers in charge of their responsibilities. The DOs are responsible for registering and monitoring private schools, cross-checking bills for financially, payments, preparing budgets, estimates, preparing district development programs, maintaining school buildings in appropriate condition ensuring that school syllabus is covered fully and in time and responding to assembly questions. The next official in the hierarchy is the deputy education officer who works under the guidance of district education officer that is DEO and comply all the duties which are given by the district education officer. They assist the DOs in discharge of their function and implement a more intensive inspection regime. Each deputy education officer is required to inspect all middle schools at least twice every year and at least 25 percent primary schools once every year. They evaluate performance of head teachers in their area of jurisdiction, sanction their bills and exercise overall superintendence over their work. As much they comprise the functional tier at the district level, they also carry out literacy campaigns. Deputy education officers are assisted by assistant education officers who are the field officers in the district education hierarchy. AEOs, assistant education officers, are responsible for monitoring of schools to check teachers' 
attendance, student enrollment, and condition of school buildings. Let's have some more clarity about the functions of district education officers and AEOs. Administrative functions of the district education officers and assistant education officers to disseminate information on new policies and government initiatives, to disburse salaries of teachers and headmasters, to inspect and administer all matters related to teachers, employment which include religious, medical, other types of leave, transfer and promotion proposals, maintain a seniority list of teachers, life insurance, provident fund and pension related retirement issues. Disburse government allocated funds to schools for teaching, learning material, annual maintenance and maintain accounts for the same. Oversee distribution of free textbooks, teaching guides, free uniforms and any other resources provided to the schools by the government. Maintain list of teacher vacancies in the schools in her jurisdiction. Mediate with the village education council that is VEC to keep them in the loop of the district educational administration. There are some academic functions of the district education officers and AEOs like to supervise and inspect all schools in their jurisdiction. This function includes making at least three to four school visits, one of which is a day long thorough school inspection while other two, three are unscheduled surprise visits to monitor the functioning of the school. To prepare a written report of each school visit that is maintained by the school. Each report typically contains information of pupil attendance at the time of visit, some broad observations of the visit and any pressing matter that was discussed with the HM. It may be worth noting that there is no copy of this report maintained at any district office prepare a log of his or her monthly activities and send it to DEO. Complete exhaustive report of school annual inspection and send it to DEO. Bring to DEO's attention any pressing matters emerging out of a regular school visit. Note that matters such as teacher vacancies, infrastructure and issues such as no toilets and inadequate space for learners in classrooms are considered routine and not urgent enough to be reported outside of the annual inspection report. Collect and compile school level data on indicators such as enrollment, completion rate, dropout rate and repetition rate. All data is collected on the basis of gender and social class, evaluate teachers and make suggestions on teaching practices, mediate with the diets to send teachers on appropriate training programs, keep track of different training programs that every teacher in their jurisdiction has attended. Next important segment in educational administration in urban area is Directorate of School Education. Similar to the Directorate of Elementary Education, the administration under the Directorate of School Education goes on from the Director of School Education on top to each Chief Education Officer posted in the districts to the one or more district education officers posted in every block of a district depending on the size of the blocks who then in turn directly deal with the primary and middle schools in their district with the help of school inspectors, head teachers and other teachers. The functions and processes remain same as discussed earlier. Next one is Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. This is the third segment in the discussion. The district program officer 
is headed by district program officer and he shall be appointed by the executive committee of SSA. He shall have the same powers and responsibilities in relation to the project at the district level as the state program director has at the state level. He shall set up steering groups for each program component and functional area. The head of the steering groups will together constitute the district level committee, which is also known as district task force, which shall work as an organic team for furthering the project at the district level. There are important functions of district program office like the district level committees are responsible for planning, implementation and monitoring the SSA program in the districts, orienting the lower level structure committees in micro planning, school village mapping, plan formulation and target fixing. School village level plans are to be consolidated at cluster level and block level and incorporated into the district plans, annual and prospective district plans. Block and village specific goals and targets and area specific programs and strategies to achieve the same have to be formulated and monitored to review progress and status on enrollment of retention, dropout rates, etc. Blockwise implementing approved plan activities as per the calendar, monitoring programs, implementation through periodically reviews, visits to schools, block resource center and cluster resource center, maintaining and updating household data and school information for cent per cent enrollment and completion at district level. Distribution of grants to various agencies and monitoring the proper and transparent utilization of grants released to identify critical infrastructure requirements and plan to bridge the same. Monitoring the progress and quality of construction works undertaken in the districts organizing awareness campaigns, district level functions, monitoring the proper distribution of various incentives to children, securing the coordination and cooperation of other agencies like NGOs, self-help groups, government departments, etc. for enrollment, tackling dropouts, achievement levels and quality of education, supervising the training programs at the district and blocks and assessing the impact of training, conducting of research activities, both formal and action research through SSA personnel and research scholars in the districts. To conclude this topic, it may be said that the 21st century marks the era of refinement of educational administration by delegation of educational administrative powers at each level. In India, a host of institutional structures between the district level and the schools have been set up in the last one decade to strengthen the schools as well as the curriculum framework. So we see that general functions and processes of educational administration include resource programs, planning and policy making, provisions and maintenance of funds and facilities, obtaining development of personnel, improvement of instructional programs, student personnel services and maintenance of effective interrelationships with the community and external agencies. That's all in this topic. Thank you students.